Hello everyone and welcome to this video. We are going to draw my 21st sketchbook today that I finished last week. Um, it's just a regular art collection Moleskin sketchbook in A5. And yeah, let's jump into it. So I started the sketchbook on the 15th of January this year and finished it on the 22nd of October. This sketchbook includes my October challenge because I like to go about October in a way that I do 31 drawings in maximum 31 days instead of doing 31 days one drawing each because I find that I can't finish the challenge if I do that. So I just found my way to make it work. And this is pretty long for me to finish a sketchbook. Like 10 months is uh, to me a long time because I used to be able to finish sketchbooks within a month. <laughs> but this year a lot of things happened. I finished my studies, I started working, I got a cat, I moved. <laughs> so it just makes sense that I wouldn't be able to fill it that quickly. And also I just did a lot of digital art and animated. So yeah, it just took me a bit longer, but that's fine. I decided to do the dates page in a little bit of a scrapbooking style because I did, did want it to look nice, but I didn't feel like drawing on it. So this was my solution to that. And then this is my official cover page to my sketchbook, just my persona waving hello, welcome to my sketchbook, and then the 21 because this is my sketchbook number 21. I really like this little illustration, it was actually one of the last drawings that I did in the sketchbook because I, like I'm sure many others, <laughs> get very intimidated by the first page and I do want it to look nice but I am always scared when I first start a sketchbook to mess it up. So I usually do it pretty late or like halfway through the sketchbook. So that's what I did here too, but I do really like how it came out. It's very simple, but I think it came out really cute. This is the first spread that I actually drew on, as I usually do, like I just said, skip the first page, draw on the second. <laughs> um, so in the first spread, I like to just do some quick studies. It helps me take the fear of the new sketchbook away because these one minute studies, they're not supposed to look good, right? You just have one minute per drawing uh, and it's just to help me ease into the sketchbook. It helps me really well, maybe it's, something that works for you too. This is just something that I find over the years and over all the sketchbooks that I've filled is for me the easiest way to break into one. Yeah, I actually recorded the, doing this spread and put it at the end of my last sketchbook tour. So if you're interested in that, you can just go check it out though. As you can see, it's nothing super special, but yeah, this is just what I like to do to break into a sketchbook. Then on this spread, I just drew Ty and Matt from Digimon Adventure with their partners. I originally wanted to draw all eight of the Digimon Adventure kids, but I lost motivation after these two, so I didn't. But I do like these sketches. I think they came out really nice. Then because this year is the year of the tiger, I wanted to draw some tigers. I really like how these came out too. I don't usually draw tigers, so uh, this was a bit of a challenge, but I had fun doing it. I was actually born in the year of the tiger. So I wanted to draw myself with my two zodiacs. So it's the tiger for Eastern Zodiac and my Western Zodiac is the Leo. So I drew myself with a lion and a tiger. And I do really like how this little illustration came out. I really like the golden backdrop. Yeah, I think it's really cute. Here I just drew my Percy Jackson OCs or some of them, uh, just some quick sketches. So this is Simmons, Azira and Noemi. And here's Azira again, just a little bit younger. For Azira, because he has the most fleshed out backstory of my Percy Jackson OCs, of which I have quite a few. <laughs> um, I was thinking for a while now about doing a little animatic series telling his story, but I didn't do that yet. Maybe I'll do it someday. Then here's another Percy Jackson OC. This is Caitlin, and here she is when she's younger as well. And this is some watercolor paper that I just stuck in after I painted this on it. I really didn't need to paint on this specific paper. I could have just done it in the Moleskine sketchbook because while this paper is not that great, it's really good enough to handle a little bit of water and I didn't use that much here, so it would have worked out. But I wanted to draw or I wanted to paint on watercolor paper, so I did. So, And then I just stuck it in here because it relates to Caitlin. And here Caitlin is again with her two boyfriends, Lias and Tyler. If you've been subscribed to my channel, you probably came from the Dirty Mind video because that's just my most popular video on the channel. So the chances are high that you, that you came from there. <laughs> and that one features these three. And I really like them and I like drawing them every now and again. So here they are. Here again, Simmons, Azira and Noemi, just some quick sketches of them. Here just had the idea of a bleeding heart stuck in my head. So. I did some sketches and I stuck in these sticky notes, not because I wanted to cover anything up, but because I liked the pop of color. And then here I did a little yeah, illustration, <laughs> yeah, a little doodle. 
and a second sticky note again that I cut out previously for the heart that's melting. <laughs> um, I am not sure if that was intended from the start, I don't remember, or if I only did that because I messed up when I added the black color, but either way I do like it because it works well with the sticky notes on this side. I think it makes this spread more cohesive and I really like that. Here's a Digimon OC of mine. This is Choco. She's a Lobmon. Um, she's one of the characters that I will play in the Digimon server that I'm in, which you might know if you've been watching some other videos of mine. <laughs> I like to imagine her wearing a skirt, uh, even though it doesn't make sense in roleplay that she would have one. I still need to figure out how she would get one in roleplay. But I'm sure I'll manage somehow. <laughs> and I just think she looks really cute in a skirt. And I feel like it would fit her character and she'd really enjoy wearing one. So I wanted to draw her in a skirt. These sketches I actually did while I was waiting. I was accepted to do a trial week for a job. And I was an hour early because I am the personification of the stereotype Germans are always punctual. <laughs> so I was terrified of being late. So I was one hour early and I just waited in front of the office and did some sketches. Here's Lissidi, I think she came out really cute. And some cat studies, one minute each. And the next day I was only 30 minutes early and not an hour. <laughs> so I waited in front of the office again and did some more cat studies. And then I got accepted to the job and so it was time for me to move. I was still living in the apartment that I lived in during my studies at that time. And on this day, my mom and my brother came and helped me move and pack all of my stuff. And I was going back to Berlin, where I'm originally from. So we packed everything and my mom and my brother took me back home, <laughs> away from the city where I studied. And it was really, really stressful. So I knew myself just screaming, but I was also excited, but I was also really tired. And so I just drew my emotions. This here is Natalie. She's one of my, yeah, magical children. <laughs> She's a magical girl. And I just did some quick sketches of her. I do like this one. She looks so smug and I think it's really in her personality to like grin at someone like this. <laughs> I think it's really cute. And here she is with Lucidi. So with this character. And here's another one of my magical children. This is Hikaru. And I really, really hated the spread when I first like finished the pen sketches until I singled out these two sketches and yeah, made them pop a little bit by adding some black line art and this purple pink backdrop. And now I actually really like it. So just making these two show up clearer on the page and therefore bringing all the other sketches that I don't like <laughs> into the background really, really made me yeah, like this spread a lot more than I did before. Here's just some quick pencil sketches. Noemi, Azira, Raja, Hikaru. <laughs> just some quick sketches. Another page that I didn't particularly like or don't particularly like, but I think it's in the spirit of the sketchbook, this one makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and I also like made just the sketch because I liked it the most from all the sketches on the page. Just made it pop a little bit so that the focus would be on the one sketch that I actually like. <laughs> Some more pen sketches. These are all not actual characters, just some random figures that I drew. But these two are Kali and Tala, who are more of my magical children, my magical girls. <laughs> I love them. And then it was Art Fight, and for that I redesigned my character Satan, who is a character that I originally created for an animatic that I did during my studies. And she didn't have a proper design, I just quickly drew a girl with horns and that was Satan. <laughs> so I wanted to redesign her and here just refined her design a bit more and uh, took some notes on it. And I do end up really liking it and I just did some pen sketches. I do like this little sketch a lot. If you've watched my previous sketchbook tour, you know that I like to do some uh, abstract watercolor paintings in that one. And I originally wanted to do that here too, but I ended up not liking it um, at all. So instead I opened Pinterest, uh, took a random image of a girl and just drew her over it, stuck over this piece of paper to redraw her face because there were like random colors everywhere from when I was attempting to do an abstract painting. And then I just added more color to it and in the end I do really end up liking it. So um, yeah, the moral of the story is just keep going. If you don't like it, just make something completely different out of it and maybe it will turn out all right because I do really like this spread now. 
And since I was already on Pinterest drawing a Pinterest girl, I decided to stay there and draw some more. Here I actually tested out some new alcohol markers that I got for my birthday from a good friend of mine. So they bled through and in order to still be able to use the next page properly, I stuck some paper over it and drew some outfits that I found on Pinterest. Um, and here I originally drew a girl from the back um, with the hair flowing in the wind, but because it was so close up, you couldn't really tell what it was and I didn't like it. So I made a little hair monster out of it, which is why there's like two little hands here. Uh, but it just seemed so out of place. <laughs> I did kind of like it, I thought it was kind of cute, but it just seemed so out of place. Um, so I, I decided to stick sticky notes in it just kind of randomly and then draw another Pinterest outfit because I found this other outfit with a transparent skirt that I really liked, so I wanted to draw it. And this is one, he's another one of my Digimon OCs. He's actually the partner to Shoko, to her. So I did some sketches of him. I do really like this little chibi sketch right here. I think it came out really cute. And here he is again, and I just pulled up a light reference on Pinterest again. And I used the same markers that I used for this one and a pink water-based marker that I used here too a little bit. And then here, I stuck in sticky notes again to cover up the bleed through from the alcohol markers. And then I just, still on Pinterest, because Pinterest is the number one site for references, <laughs> um, I pulled up this reference and just did a quick sketch. I think I could have done better with this if I went in it with like paints or something, but I do like it either way. I think I do like the sketchy look of it, so I think it's still pretty. And here is another Digimon OC. She's an Alraumon, um, which is just, if you know a little bit about, about Digimon, you might know Palmon. Uh, and Alraumon is just Palmon, but with the virus typing and a slightly different color scheme. And this is the Inktober prompt list that I used. So I did a Pokemon Inktober. So starting on the next page, my Inktober starts. <laughs> yeah, I did a Pokemon Inktober. And I originally didn't even plan on doing Inktober this year, just on the 1st of October. Someone in the Digimon server I'm in actually asked me if we wanted to do this list together. And I was like, yeah, sure, I have some time, let's do it. If you can read it, I don't know if you can because it's really small and it's also really hard to read in person uh, because I didn't print it out big enough. Um, it always says like Fave Electro Pokemon or um, f Favorite Cute Legendary or something like that. And I just want to say it before we go into it that I um, often didn't use my actual favorite Pokemon of this type or this category. I just chose the first one that like caught my eye when I scrolled through lists of these types of Pokemon. Um, and with that said, we're starting the Inktober now because I did make sure that they're all one after another. So the first one was a normal type and I drew Ditto. Ditto is actually my favorite Pokemon of them all. I love Ditto. <laughs> um, so I drew some Ditto. And I put a Miu here because I am a strong defender of the theory that Ditto is a failed Miu clone. Um, so I wanted to include Miu. And for Steel type, I drew Hierarchy. And for these two, I actually plan to put in the typing symbol somewhere in the illustration. So here it's like included here, which is a little circle with the two ears. Um, and here's the Steel symbol. These are just symbols that I found on the German Pokemon wiki. I don't know where they're from because the card game doesn't have every type, so I don't really know. But either way, I added these, or I included these symbols, but I threw that idea out of the window. On the next Pokemon, my fire type, I do not have Pokemon Legends Arceus. I do not have a switch, so I can't have it. Um, so I'll never have this little guy, but I do like him a lot, so I wanted to draw him for fire. And for this one, I uh, stuck in some transparent paper because I wanted to fix some stuff. I didn't have to because I went in it with gouache as well over the paper, over the transparent paper that I stuck in. So I could have also just covered it up on the page itself because I mostly just wanted to make the ears bigger. But I do like the extra layer it gives so much so that I did it again on this page, even though I really didn't need to because I didn't mess anything up. For Fairy type, I drew Curlia. This is probably my least favorite or one of my two least favorite Inktober drawings that I did this year. I think it's fine, but I think the colors are just kind of muddy and I didn't know what to do with the background. To be fair, I didn't know what to do with the background for most of these, but I don't like the solution I found for this one. I think for some others just came out a lot better. But I do really like 
this Flygon drawing. So one of my least favorites is next, right next to one of my favorites. And I think that evens out the spread again. <laughs> Then for rock type, I drew Lavita, and for Electro, I drew Minon and Plasla. Uh, I do really like this page. I really like the lighting that I did here. I'm proud of myself for doing this. <laughs> and I also just really like these two a lot. I have a, a Plasla in my recent Pokemon Alpha Sapphire playthrough, and she almost single-handedly beat the Pokemon League, which was pretty impressive. And I love her, so. For bug type, it was pretty clear to me that I would draw Beautifly because Beautifly was my favorite Pokemon when I was a kid and just in homage to that, I wanted to draw her. And then for grass, I drew Celebi and I put this little portal because the time travels. Uh, it kind of works. It looks on camera, I think, better than it does in real life. So that's something. And then I just stuck in some paper that I cut out for some highlights. For ice type, I chose the Lolan Vulpix. I think it's just really cute. And for water type, I chose Manafi. Manafi was another one of my favorites when I was a kid. And I really wanted to have a Manafi. I imagined having a backpack that you could fill with water <laughs> that had like a little window, like these cat backpacks kind of. And with my Manafi sitting in it and I would just travel around with it. But I never got to have one, not even while playing, because my friend and I, we would always play Pokemon, like run around pretend we're Pokemon trainers, but we had a rule that you couldn't have legendary, so I didn't get to have a Manafi, but I really wanted to, and I might make an OC that has that little backpack, because I still think it's a cute idea, so that might be an idea. For flying, I drew Artaria, just very simple little illustration. I do like the blue line art this one has, though. I think it's really cute. And then for dragon, I drew Dago, I think it's in English. Um, I had one in my playthrough of Pokemon Black and I called him Kudo and I loved him. So I wanted to draw this little guy. Also, I just love the lore that he's blind, so he keeps running into things, but he's always hungry. So I just imagine him being a little gremlin that like, runs after like the smell of food, but he can't see. So he just keeps, yeah, bumping into everything. <laughs> I think he's really cute. Then for ghost type, I drew Mimikyu. I probably should have drawn Mimikyu for fairy because there are so many cool ghost types, but I drew it for ghost. And I really like this illustration. I think it came out really nice. And here I drew Rupa, the new one for poison, the one that was released for Scarlet and Violet. Again, I don't have a Switch, so I won't play these games, so I will never have one. But I just thought he's cute, and I really like Rupa in general, so I wanted to draw him for Poison. For fighting, I drew Yulu, just an obvious choice. I do like the pose, I think it's really dynamic, I really like it. And for Dark, I drew Mopiku, because I relate to Mopiku on a spiritual level, because I get hangry very much, <laughs> so I can understand his feelings. So I wanted to draw him. Now we're away from the typing. This is favorite starter Pokemon and I drew Piplup. It was my first starter that I didn't have to share with anyone <laughs> because I did have a Game Boy Color and my brother and I, we would share our Game Boy Color games, which meant that we also shared our Pokemon games back then. And I would usually start a new game, pick a starter and like do the first, probably not even the first gym, like go to the first town. And then I would stop playing because I never really liked playing a lot of games. So my brother would pick it up and then he would finish the game. And that was what probably happened like a lot, at least in my memory. <laughs> and then when we were in third grade, we got our Nintendo DSs and Pokemon Diamond was the first Pokemon game that I didn't have to share with anyone. And there I had a Piplup and I loved it. And so I wanted to draw her. And then for baby Pokemon, I drew P. I like most baby Pokemon. So this one was a bit of a struggle <laughs> to single out which one I wanted to draw, but I do like this drawing, so. Um, this is genderless Pokemon, I drew Rotom. And for big legendary, I drew Giratina. I didn't know what to do with the background with this one. To be fair, I didn't know what to do with the background for most of these. So I just scribbled in it at first, but then it was just too busy. So I added this black color block and uh, I think that really brought the focus back. And I do really like it now. The only thing that I don't like about the spread in general is that these two stripes go into the same direction, kind of, but they do not connect. 
that I think would have been better if they were like connecting or if this one was like this way or this one was this way just so that they don't have the same direction. But that's something I just noticed now. I didn't even notice that when I was drawing it, just something that I just realized right now. I'm rambling, let's move on. A small legendary, I don't know his name in English. It's Turbots in German. You may have noticed already I did make like flowy bits <laughs> longer for some of these Pokemon. I also did that for Manafi and for Hirachi. I also did that for him. Yeah, just because I think that that helps with composition makes it look a little bit, little bit more interesting. Also, I have absolutely no clue what to do with the background here, so I just did some random stuff. I think it kind of works though. And then for single stage Pokemon, I drew Spinda. I really like this little one. I really want to shiny hunt it just because it would be like one of a kind because it's so unlikely that someone would have a shiny with the same pattern. And here's Lilip for fossil Pokemon, just a simple little drawing. And for different forms, I drew Shaman. I really like this drawing. Um, I like the black background and then the window-like uh, cutout. And I think it just came out really cute. For gender differences, I drew Nidoran, also an obvious choice. And for Shiny, I drew Latias, mostly just because in yeah, my Pokemon Alpha Sapphire playthrough, I shiny hunted Latias and I love her. Uh, and if you don't know, you have to watch this really long cutscene every time. <laughs> it's like two or three minutes um, of cutscene and it just makes the shiny hunt so slow. But uh, I got her when I like on a, also on a day when I was really upset and first try that day and I was really excited and I just love her a lot. So I wanted to draw her for shiny. I knew that right away that I would draw her. Um, this is Pokemon for competitive battling, but I don't know anything about competitive Pokemon, like at all. So I just drew Pachirizu because that's like the only thing, the only piece of content about uh, competitive Pokemon that I know. That one, this one time, this one year, someone won the world championship, I think, uh, with a Pachirizu that, could, that used to follow me. And there's a lot of cool fan art of it. So I just drew that one. And then for favorite mega Pokemon, I drew Gardevoir, but specifically the shiny because what I really, really like about the mega Gardevoir is that the normal one has uh, a white dress, but the shiny one has a black dress and I just think that's really cool, so. And this is my other one of the two least favorite ones, favorite Alolan Pokemon. I drew Alolan Raichu because I do really like it, but I didn't... I don't like how it came out. I did like the line art and then I colored it and I think the brown is just too, too dark and I don't have proper shading in there and I just don't like it that much, but I also don't care enough to go back in and fix it. This is the lasting turbo drawing. This is number 31. And so in order to celebrate it, I just drew my persona with my favorite fake Pikachus, <laughs> a Ditto and a Mimikyu. And I think this drawing at least came out really, really cute. <laughs> Even though this one has nothing to do with the Inktober challenge itself. I just think it came out really cute. And that's the end of my Inktober challenge. So we're going back to regular sketchbook stuff. And during this challenge, I just did some figure studies. So I uh, counted out these pages beforehand and just moved on here. And this is just some 60 seconds or one minute figure studies. And here's some 30 second figure studies and some 60 seconds figure studies again. And then here we have some five minute figure studies and I just put 300 in the back so that it would connect with the previous pages. And on this day I finished Inktober so I didn't really do much uh, except for Inktober while I was working on the challenge. Uh, but here I finished Inktober and I was just so tempted to for the last few spreads was just some studies because I knew that I would be able to finish it in a day if I did. And I did finish in a day, but I didn't do just studies. So on this spread or on this page, <laughs> I vented my emotions because my DHL delivery guy didn't ring the doorbell and just brought my package into a pickup point. And I was just really annoyed because this was also not the first time this happened. And it just made me a little bit upset. So I did some sketches. I wasn't really that upset about it, as the sketches might suggest, but I, I was kind of upset. So I decided to draw it and I just pushed the emotion a bit further than it actually was <laughs> for the sake of sketches. And then here I did some studies 
like I said, I would. Uh, just some quick 30 second cat studies. Uh, mostly just because I did cat studies early on the sketchbook, so I wanted to try doing it again. I really like this one. What I learned is that I'm way better in drawing quick studies when I do not focus on the face, but when the face shows up, I naturally want to draw the face. Either way, I wanted to, I, I've been wanting to um, make my figure studies and studies in general, these quick studies, le less messy, so I've been trying to make more clear lines. So I did that here too. And I think these turned out really well. And then here's 60 second studies and five minute studies. And I actually really like these, so I had fun doing these. And then here I just wanted to do something abstract um, because I didn't do that in a while, so I wanted to do that again. And I didn't actually want to fill the rest with just studies because that's boring. So I just put some random color splotches in here and then just drew some random lines. And then it looked kind of like a face, so I made a face out of it, but I hated it. So I went in with black and stuck in this paper and did this little scribbly doodle that I really end up liking. This page is probably, or the spread is probably one that most people won't like as much. Um, also because it's just very different from what I usually do, but I really like it. I had so much fun doing it. It was so freeing to just go into it without any idea and just do whatever felt right in the moment, even though I obviously didn't spend much time on this, but this was just, I had a lot of fun doing this. So I wanted to keep doing abstract stuff, so I just wanted to do, draw some abstract trees, but when I took off the tape, it ripped the page, and that's the worst thing that can happen. I always get so upset. So in order to like save it somehow, I just stuck in some um, paper and this transparent paper wrote autumn on it. I don't like this spread a lot, but it is what it is. And then here I just did some studies again and some studies. And this is my last page. So on the last page, I usually just do some swatches or just test the pens um, because I do not have like swatch paper. So I need to test the same pen like multiple times throughout the sketchbook, but I didn't want to cover it up completely. So I just stuck in some transparent paper so that it would be a little bit lighter and not like in the focus as much, but you could still see it. And then I drew my persona again. Thank you for looking for my sketchbook, waving goodbye. <laughs> and yeah, that's the end. That's the end of my 21st sketchbook. I already started the next one and in the vein of doing this little drawing that I really liked, I actually decided to go more messy with my next one. Um, I do assume that after my 20 second sketchbook then I will probably go back to doing like more yeah, aesthetic sketchbooks. I mean, I do not pay that much attention on making it super aesthetic and I'm fine with having pages in here that aren't, but I, overall I do like it to have it look good, you know. But I do have a lot of fun with the new sketchbook that I started where I just do whatever. And if I just want to scribble, like just some scribbles without any meaning, I just do it and it's a really good time. So um, if you're interested in that one, because I'm unsure if I'm gonna share it, because it will not look so nice probably, at least that's what I assume right now. Uh, but if you're still interested in that, let me know, because if you are, I will record that sketchbook tour as well. Either way, I'm really happy that you made it so far into the video. And I want to thank you very much for yeah, watching all of this, looking through my sketchbook with me. And I hope it yeah, inspired you to work on your own. Or if you haven't been working on it all along, because I like to watch sketchbook tours uh, while I work in my own sketchbook. Just have them play in the background. Either way, uh, I'm rambling. <laughs> so this is it from my side. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a Good day, evening or night, whatever it is. Bye bye.